Hi everybody, it's me again, International Master Sopika Gormishvili here for you on Chess 24. Today is Thursday evening and as I promised you on Tuesday, I would have a show uh, every Thursday with banter blitz and every Tuesday with tactic training. So I hope that's a good news and if you're new to the show and you don't know how it works, you have to challenge me on the nickname Sopico with 5 minute blitz game. Um, I'm choosing first premium members because, um, you know, premium members to feel appreciated and if you're not a premium member yet, you should definitely become one because there are lots of things to discover on Chess24 and you will have access to anything once you're a premium member. Okay, so today we're going to play lots of Blitz games and I'm gonna play against you guys and I will also comment the games, uh, that's why it's called Banter Blitz. So let's get started, I'm going to Chess24 and I will see the challenges. I see that I have lots of challenges already Thanks for that, and here we go. I'm, I don't have any order to choose, so I'm just randomly choosing. And let's see. I'm gonna play against... I'm gonna play against Kuzma. We started the game and I hope you see it okay oh sorry sorry for that I hope you see the board I am with uh, black pieces and e4 I'm gonna start with c5 my favorite opening is neither, as you know, though I'm playing usually, I'm probably mixing sometimes, sometimes mixing up the lines, sometimes uh, being flexible or trying to be flexible, so I'm playing sometimes Taimanov, sometimes neither, sometimes e5. In World Championship I even tried uh, the Pyrk. So Bishop g5, this is, um, this is most trendy. Uh, line and uh, it cannot get more topical of course bishop g5 bishop e3 it's very very big lines and my idea with knight bd7 is to reply e5 on f4 i think uh it was uh, i was kind of one of the first to play um this uh move e5 in georgian women championship against uh, nazi Baikitsa. Uh, the game ended in a draw, but it was quite interesting one. And since that, I'm always trying to get into blitz games or sometimes classical games. I think it's quite an uh, interesting move. Um, and if you want to know something about it, you should uh, definitely look deeply. It is not the move I am um, uh, I am recommending in my series on Chess Twenty Four for neither series, um, but um, I think it's quite quite a nice one. Actually, I don't even remember right now, I did this series so long ago, I don't even remember exactly what I'm recommending there. So you should definitely go and check it, don't trust me right now. Um, okay, I think I'll just grab this pawn and I'll go to a3. Uh, my idea is sometimes to get queen c5. My idea generally is to develop in this position. Um, what black is lacking is development. I have an extra pawn. Um, it looks like it's a healthy extra pawn, but on cost of uh, development. So if I manage to develop, if I manage to have my king very safe on the king side, then I'm doing very fine. So what white should try is to 
use his tempos, use his development and be active. I am not sure what is the exact way to be active. I think rook b3 is not the move because I, okay, it can be of course played, but I anyway wanted to go queen c5 because my queen on a3 was not very, very good. Um, this one, f takes and e takes, I'm not big fan of because seems like I am developing quite nicely and um, yeah, if I, as I said before, if I manage to develop then I have very nice position with a healthy extra pawn. Um, I don't think that um, Kuzma uh, used the tempos and used his uh, development rightly, uh, correctly or to get any anything, any compensation. So at least for now it looks to me that uh, white doesn't really have uh, um, good compensation. Okay, I'll just go bishop d6, then I'm going to castle and c5 square is mine. I hope there is nothing after castle because bishop h7, I have to be always careful of course with bishop h7 and uh, stuff like that. But um, so far after knight c5, uh, first of all e4 is the threat, bishop c5 and bishop c5. Now I have two bishops. I would play, um, I would play this move just so that I don't get any annoying knight g5s. Um, okay, why to give up this pawn? Maybe I'll go back like this. And afterwards I want to play bishop g4. Okay, he doesn't let me. Uh, probably he wants knight e4, so I will go f5. Knight c4 I'm not afraid because uh, I just wanted to play e4 on knight d6, grab queen d6 and bishop c4 just go b5. Looks like I win the... Ooh! That's... Uh, I hope I did not blunder anything. At least uh, it does not seem for me like that. I will grab with the bishop and then... Um, okay, looks, I don't know how, how it looks, <laughs> but uh, uh, he just told me it's a blunder, but um, okay, I would play bishop f5 with the idea of um, queen f5 and queen c4, but then rook b7 and I don't have any mates, so let's, let's not do that b5 also not okay i have to develop or i have to play for exchange and i like queen a7 because uh for now white has problems on back rank and uh, he resigned thank you thank you very much for the game um i think that um uh, starting here queen a3 and rook b3 is already not a uh, very nice way to um, be active, let's say, and uh, uh, develop because I anyway want to go to c5 and f takes, d takes, this is definitely in my favor. It opens up my uh, bishop on a fate and then I have very easy play to develop. So I think what uh, white should have tried is just to develop with Bishop c4, afterwards castle, okay, not to blunder queen c5, or of course, uh, but just to play for, also it's possible sometimes to take bishop f6 and knight f6, though you have to be very careful with f takes, uh, d takes and knight e5, because then black squares are very, very weak. Okay. Anyway, thank you for the game. I wish you all the best for the next ones. And there we go. Next.
opponent for me will be will be will be Duke Crusher. Okay, so I'm playing again with black pieces and um, let's see how he will start. What's gonna be b3? Hmm, no e4, no d4, just the sidelines. I will go e5. I like this, I like to have center from the very beginning. <laughs> and um, okay, he probably wants to. He probably wants to play something like, though I don't, I'm not sure what, well, how is this opening called? He probably knows better than me. Um, do I blunder something? Let's say if I play f6, I hope I'm completely okay, but I still have to be very careful with 95 type of moves. No, I don't think it works here, so I will go f6 just. Just to have very strong, strong center if um, it won't be, <laughs> if it won't be exploited um, in a good way for him. So, um, I don't know. I, I hope nothing works here for him. Uh, like 95 moves or if I manage to play knight e7, bishop e6, castle, I, I will be quite happy with my position because I have center, um, which I like. I'm not saying that uh, white is playing, um, white is worse or something, but for sure um, I like my position. Let's see how it will continue. He's taking his time. Knight e7, castle, bishop e6, this is my plan. Uh, probably also it's possible to play bishop c6 for him, and but without knight c3. I thought bishop c6, b takes c3, and b takes c6, and d3, just to play for this bishop so that there is no bishop a6 or something like this. Okay, d4, I would go e4, and um, if we look at the position, if we had miss strategy here right now, next, she would very nicely explain you the bad pieces and the good pieces. So, I will try to copy her, and I will try to uh, explain you what I learned from her. First, I will make the move, just to be sure that I don't blunder anything after bishop e6. I have to consider knight d e4, d takes e4, d5. But I have knight d5, knight d5, bishop d5, queen d5, and bishop b4. I'm winning the queen. So that's tactics. <laughs> um, all right, so what I wanted to say, um, if we look at the position, this bishop on b2 is quite bad because it is closed with the pawn on d4 and d4 pawn cannot cannot move um b takes c6 or knight c6 what's better because now if i take knight c6 then there is knight d e4 d takes e4 d5 take and queen d5 so i don't have any check okay it's easy to take decision and take this bishop with the pawn um he wants knight c5 and rightly so very very nicely played actually miss strategy would like it <laughs> um but i will still try to i'll try to kind of have attack on the king side. C4. This move I didn't really um, expect. Okay, C5 is, of course, the uh, uh, the threat. So I have to definitely uh, take care of this move. 
I like knight g6 because maybe I can jump to uh, h4, knight h4, I like it, then f5, c5. He closed it. Um, I'm not sure about this decision because then I have a clear plan on the king side with f5 and f4 and um, I would, I would, for white I would, I don't know, play rook c1 just because the pawn on c4 was standing much nicer because the tension in the center was in white's favor. So I get uh, what is of course his idea that um, I don't play g3 and uh, I mean f4 so he plays g3 but still I would I would prefer that this pawn stands on c4 rather than on c5. Okay, uh, let's go for some maneuvering. H4. I thought that I could somehow um, maybe sacrifice it, but now it's not worth it because knight h4 or bishop h4, gh, knight h4, long castle, and that would not give me anything. So far my opponent is playing very, very well and what I said, actually Miss Strategy would be very angry to me now because she would be like, yeah, look at this bishop, you were talking about this bishop, but now look at your bishop on e6. Though I have to say that this knight on a4 is not doing anything also. Knight f1, this I don't understand okay knight h2 he wants but okay what we should play for i will do like this i will keep on maneuvering and this bishop on e6 Okay, I will go a5. Will come from this bishop on a6. It will come from a6. And finally, it will be very nice bishop. <laughs> um, all right, so I think I would play knight g4 here with the idea of taking on f2. Queen d2. So he wants to grab on, uh, okay, I have to be quite quick, actually, <laughs> because I don't have that much time and I have to open up the lines and play for, I don't know, for what, but, okay, before everything, everything looks like it's I don't know how it looks like, but I have to have to do something. Let's do like this. Rook h4 is not there, so my pawn on g4 is not in danger. What I want afterwards is rook f8, then this pawn would be a little bit weak. Maybe I want queen c4 as well. I like my pawn on queen e1, queen c4. Now I want to take here. Queen d2, I will go back here. Rook g2, I will get this one here. Rook h2, I will go h6 just in case. Ooh, and I have to be really fast. Okay, bishop e2. I don't know if it makes sense to play bishop f3 or not, but now it definitely does because I'm winning. Uh, okay, I won this one, but I'm not sure. Okay, like this maybe. Eh, just, he's just playing. Uh, I will exchange this one. Oh, he doesn't want doesn't want to exchange. Um, 
It's quite tough to win this one, but I'll try my best. I'll try to get this pawn. And then play for, ooh, I won. I won on time. Thank you, thank you very much. It was quite, uh, quite tough game and it was very interesting one. Um, probably you're playing these systems already a very, very long time. So I don't know if I correctly um, uh, faced it or not, but um, let's say already here, First, I thought that, okay, white might have some good position or some good maneuvering or stuff, but still, uh, this bishop is not playing, this knight on a4 is not playing, and knight f1 I definitely did not like here because it um, doesn't do anything. This one has to be in the game, so I thought knight c3 is the move, and then maybe a3, b4 or a4. Uh, b4 b5 could be an option um, but most importantly what I disliked was c5 move here because the tension in the center is uh, on white's favor so I don't uh, think that closing the um, queen side um, was good for white because it closes the game here and uh, white could do anything, uh, I mean, let's say play queen c2, f5, g3, just do the same but keep the pawns on the c4 uh, and b3 because um, dc and bc I think is always in white's favor. At least if dc, uh, there is also an option for white to take the pawn with the knight so it looks uh, good for white, I think. All right, thank you for the game. Let's go for the next one. And who will be the next one? Okay. As you can see, I don't have any order to choose uh, the, oh, sorry, to choose the opponents. So I am trying to uh, play with the ones who I have not played. I'm accepting Jonan William Mobius. Ooh. I, I'm sorry if I pronounced it uh, incorrectly. I'm not very good um, in German. Um, I don't know yet, at least. I don't know anything, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, anyway, um, I started with e4, as you can see I am continuing my experiments <laughs> with e4 and now I'm facing neither myself. Okay, now it's time to reveal the secrets, <laughs> uh, not really, because um, I think neither is doing quite good um, and uh, I played this bishop e3 knight f3 in uh, the game uh, against uh, Lu Shangle in fight and say and um, I thought that um, it suits my style against uh, stronger opponents. <laughs> um, I think it's um, it is very nice to have a lot of openings and uh, not to play only one thing because, um, for example, um, you might have some forced lines which you want to play against a stronger opponent because you know that he won't go for a forced draw or something like this. But if you're playing much weaker opponent, then you don't want to go in forced lines. You want to have some game and uh, you just want to you just want to try and you just want to play. So that's why I think it's very nice to be flexible and to have uh, lots of options to play. Uh, and uh, I like this 
against stronger opponents, against weaker opponents, uh, it doesn't matter uh, because this is, you can outplay your opponent or be outplayed uh, in any position in this opening. Okay, I thought this is a blunder because I'm taking here and taking on e5 as well. So I think that it works for me. I'm taking first here. If queen d3, I have intermediate bishop f7. And here I can take rook queen d8 or here. I like this one more because then I have an option to take on d3 with the knight or with the pawn. I think I would go for the knight because um, here I thought just knight g6 is good. This is called a healthy extra pawn and I'm not even going to take this bishop because I think that after rook moves and e5 white has brilliant knight on g6 nothing can touch it it is an outpost for uh, the knight uh, we call it outpost when there is no pawn to kick the knight out so this is definitely the outpost for the knight and um, i have an extra pawn i have great chances to attack so i'm happy with my position I think that it was just a blunder to play um, to play knight c5. So after knight c5, white is doing very very well. Okay, here I would go queen g3. Afterwards, I want to play rook d1, and my pawn on e5 is good because after knight e4, there is another outpost for my knight, which is the d6 square. Um, I can even play ninety four right away without rook d1 and it can be annoying for black because sometimes I might have knight f6 or 97 ideas. Um, okay, he wants of course to get rid of this knight on g6 and now it's my time to choose which piece I want to take. I think I would go for the bishop because then it's clear that after knight e4 I have first of all knight f6 on rook d5 and uh, then I have knight d6 and once my knight gets to d6 even if it is challenged uh, I won't touch it because this pawn afterwards after exchange goes to d6 and it would be perfect for me. So um, I can go knight d6 right now, I can play rook d1 first. I think I would go knight d6 right now. When I see the move, when I see the idea, I'm... I... Um, I might hurry a bit. <laughs> now that I think of it. <laughs> um, but, still, okay, his idea is to grab knight e5, right? Uh, if I play rook d1, knight e5, queen e5, rook d7, can this be a problem for me? Maybe not, because I have knight f7, rook f7, queen c7, and rook d1, queen b8 check. Okay, that's good. So I would go rook d1, knight e5, queen e5, is actually a trap so black here this is the position where black might think that hmm he she blundered knight e5 because after queen e5 rook d7 i have but there is knight f7 so always when you calculate just take two seconds and calculate one more move tell yourself is it correct what I'm going for? I mean, when it's a um, critical moment and when you're going to sacrifice something, then it would save you lots of points. Um, okay, I would go f4 here so that I don't worry about knight, um, knight e5s anymore. Uh, I would go c4 here because I don't want to allow knight d5. And then b3. 
And I think once again, Miss Strategy would love this. Uh, <laughs> would love this position. She would be. Take a look at this knight on d6. It's so gorgeous. It is indeed gorgeous. And um, what I would like to play right now is f5 or not. Okay. This knight might not be as gorgeous as I thought <laughs> anymore because okay I'll go back this is pity that I'm going back I didn't want to go back to be honest didn't really felt feel like okay I will I will knight mm, b7 doesn't work. Um pd 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 Okay F five would it work F five? Let let's try. I don't have so much time and I don't think it's good to play F five. But I think knight d6 is the um is a mistake because then I'm grabbing f takes e6 and I would still have an extra pawn and very very dangerous uh, extra pawn okay I'll grab this one as well though I could play queen queen d5 as well uh, I would go here just to have everything under control. What I don't have under control is the time. And I have to be quite careful with it. But I think I'm doing fine. Because, yeah, now I'm winning the rook. This is quite um, on the edge of the board. Thank you! Thanks for the game! Uh, um, let's see where I would play differently is... Yeah, definitely, knight c5 was a mistake and it was a blunder, so instead it was probably better to play just queen c7, uh, rook c8 and moves like this, though I was going to play knight d5, but of course it's uh, another game and um, it just a game, neither play. All right, let's um, let's try to accept another challenge, and another one would be somebody who was challenging me in the middle of the list. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna accept Don G. Don G. I'm playing with black pieces. E4, C5. Now I'm playing neither, I guess. Once again, and let's see which. Uh, which? Ooh, sorry. Which line he will choose? F3. That's another way of um, starting bishop e3 line. Ninety-seven. Usually I play b5, but now I would go h5 because I told you that I don't like to go to forced lines. <laughs> um, in b5 there is a very, very forced line which um, white sometimes is pushing a little bit or um, or has a threefold repetition so I would not go for it and let's see if everything's fine I guess I would go here like this. 
and we would grab it with the pawn. Oh, sorry. After this game, I am going to check the chat um, so that I know everything is fine and everything works well. So this knight is terrible on a1. Okay, g4 is the idea, so I have to be quite quick, I think, and play for this. Play for this one. Um, I have an opportunity to grab it with the knight or with the bishop. Which one is better? Let's say knight d5, e d5, bishop d7. Looks okay. Or... Yeah, I like knight d5. I like to keep two bishops, so I would go for bishop d7 because bishop f5 would go um, under g4. And this is with tempo. I don't like to give tempos. Okay, so his idea is to play knight c2. But first I want to tickle this pawn a little bit. King b1 does not look nice because bishop f5 check. a3 is possible, but it just doesn't want, doesn't look like the move. Okay. Um, king b1 was played, but after bishop f5, knight c2, I guess. And I wanted to play here. I like this move because um, it's double pin. <laughs> um, and there is only queen c1 to protect uh, the to protect the pawn and mate, and I wanted to grab uh, here queen c3. So I thought that I'm winning the pawn very nicely. So after this game, I'm going to check the chat, and if you have some questions, please do ask and do write. I can go here, I can grab on c2, and I can go queen d3. I don't know which one is nicer. But actually, I would go maybe queen a3. Mm, let's see, let's see. Queen a3, king a1, queen a4, knight e3. This I don't like. Maybe I would go for queen d3 and when bishop goes then queen e2. This makes more sense. And then what is my idea? Well, I have okay, I have a great pin on uh, c2 c3 is my next move so i think bishop um, white has to move the bishop it's a must no he blundered mm, i'll just grab this one i'll just take it and i'll say thank you <laughs> um mm. Okay, g4, but now I just have, um, I don't know, I just have, um, have a piece. I don't even want to exchange this one because um, it's a nice bishop. It pins the knight. I know I told you all the time that when your material up, try to exchange uh, pieces and try to play to play good, I mean to simplify the position, but I think at this moment it's not uh, necessary because after this e4 and bishop e6, f6, just uh, huge problems on b2. And I don't see how white can, yeah. Thank you, thanks for the game. Um, 
I think that bishop e2 was tiny bit, uh, tiny bit awkward move. Awkward in the sense that I would go maybe knight a5 here. I think knight a5 would uh, be better move. But anyway, thanks for the game and I, as I promised you, now I am going to look at the chat just to make sure that everything is uh, going good and everything is nice. So here I am. Okay. So um, the first command I read on uh, chat, if I did not uh, blink, is uh, if I I cannot find it now. But first thing I read is this woman is terrible. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Sapiko, have you got any? Have you got any known for the title of GM? Mm, no, unfortunately not, but um, soon I'm playing Reykjavik Open and um, I hope to play good. I hope to get, um, I hope to win some rating and if a norm comes uh, uh, into my way, then I would be very, very happy, of course. Um, okay, so this stream is okay and um, how long is your way to GM? I have no idea how long it will take. It's quite quite difficult uh, to to achieve the Grandmaster title, and um, I I really think that uh, women who are Grandmasters they are super super awesome players because it's so so difficult to be man grandmaster as a woman okay so another question was what can you do in general with the dark squared bishop as black in neither i don't play it because i don't want to i don't know what to do with it um neither is very very dynamic opening and um, sometimes you might think that this dark squared bishop is very very uh, passive on f8 sometimes it doesn't even develop um, or if you mean the structure of d6 and uh, d6 e5 for black and d5 pawn um, with white um, you at first sight it might look a little bit awkward for black but this bishop usually for uh, as to just to develop it goes on e7 so that black is able to castle but there are some lines where it goes via h5, g6 and h6 and this bishop is actually very very important because after um, let's say bishop e7 it usually goes to g5 if it's possible. If it's possible to exchange this dark squared bishop once the uh, structure is d4, d5, uh, d6 pawns then it's very good. Uh, the very, very famous idea is to have queen on d8, bishop on e7, and play bishop g5 to exchange the bishop on e3. So this bishop has some future, and don't worry about it, just follow the flow, and um, I think you like it. I hope you like it, at least. <laughs> How do you play when you're in time travel? I have no idea how do I play when I am in time travel. I don't think about anything. I don't have time to think about anything. Uh, usually when I'm in time travel, I play with my intuition. Um, so I calculate uh, some stuff um, which I see and I hope that I am quite quick and uh, uh, if I see some trap, I'm always going for it. But usually um, in time travels, I I always try, if my opponent is also in time travel, I always try to mess up the position because um, I trust myself in complicated positions and I hope that I calculate it better than my opponent. Uh, okay, and the last question I'm going to read and then I'm going to play once again is... Um, uh, sorry. 
Um, how old you were when you learned chess? I was five years old. And what do you think makes our kids playing chess? I tried it, but mine uh, three, my third one probably, like Xbox more than chess. <laughs> Ooh, that's uh, <laughs> okay. That that um, yeah. If your child likes Xbox more, then I don't know what to <laughs> what to recommend. But when I was five years old, actually, my mother is also a chess player, and um, it's very common that uh, kind of professional chess player. She was professional champion. Um, sorry, chess player in Soviet Union and. Um, uh, she was quite good, uh, she even won some championships and um, she was playing very very good. Uh, but it is very funny that uh, this type of chess players, professional chess players who spent all their life uh, playing chess, they don't want their kids to play chess. Um, so she did not even uh, teach me, I have two older sisters, she did not uh, teach them as well chess. Because she thought that um, it's much easier for a girl to, I don't know, to go to school, to university and um, have hobbies, to dance, to play guitar, piano, music, all the things. Uh, but I myself got interested because when I was at grandma's place, um, I was taught um, how to play droughts. And um, then I got interested because we played droughts with chess pieces, so I got interested what these other chess pieces were going um, and why they were not on board. So I was always having chess board in my hand and uh, I was saying that I want to play chess, I want to play chess. Um, that's how I got to, to learn chess. But I think if um, you taught your kid how the um, pieces move and he is not interested but you still want him to play chess I think there are nice ways to make him interested because even if he won't be a chess player professional chess player chess is very very good for the brain for the calculation it teaches a lot of things uh, it might be very useful in his or her life so I definitely recommend that you uh, teach uh, chess to your kids and the way to get them more interested is that if he's let's say a very little one um, three years old, five years old, I don't know, six years old, just think um, think of um, some nicknames for the pieces. Let's say um, create um, a kingdom, create some, uh, I don't know what your son or daughter is uh, interested in, let's say uh, if he's interested in dinosaurs or animals or something like that, you can um, you can call pieces um, dinosaurs or princesses or queens and kings. You can have, if, if uh, you have a girl, you can have a little family, um, like this little pawns, sons and daughters, but you can like this uh, slowly and uh, surely make uh, him or her interested in the game and uh, he or she will have her own imagination about the game and once she grows up then she might be more interesting but make sure that you um, you create a very suitable names for uh, the pieces to show the power because you know the queen is very powerful so you might think of some very powerful animal and something like this at least this was what I was thinking when they asked me uh, this question. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to uh, go to my challenges again, and I am going to play against who I'm going to play. I'm going to play against Aldisto. Is it correct? Aldist, Aldisto. Okay, here we are. I'm playing again with black pieces and English. English opening. Now I'm face the English and I will play e5. We, we, we say rever, 
reversed, <laughs> reversed Sicilian. Um, okay, I'm gonna go for um, knight f6 and bishop c5. e4, right away. Ooh, this uh, this I didn't didn't uh, face yet. I was always face, facing either e3 or a3. Uh, I think I would go a6 just to make sure that my bishop is doing good there. And I would go. I would go. I would go. B rook b8. I want b5. He allows me b5. That's a bit strange. I myself played this system c4, e4, d3, g3, but I think not in this one because here I think that um, bishop is very nice and uh, but he has very very clear plan. He wants to go for f4 and he doesn't look at anything else. He's very stubborn, stubbornly telling me I want to go f4 and that's it. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let's see if it's good for him or not. Now c4 is hanging. So can he go f4? b takes c4, f5. Then I take on d3. He takes on e6 and I take on e2. So f4 doesn't work. Which means he has to do something with c4 pawn. Knight d5 was another option. And um, one more option. Okay, bishop g5 might be a little bit, little bit annoying. Not really, because then I have knight g4. Okay, so I'm going for knight d4. If he grabs, I take it. Today I have very strategic games. So once I am, um, once I finish the games, I definitely have to um, make a call with my strategy and show my games. I want to hear the expert opinion, <laughs> but I think I'm doing good. <laughs> um, as we know, tactics and strategy works very well together. So isn't this a blunder? Bishop e3 and b takes. I, I hope so, at least. Bishop e3, bishop e3, and b takes c4. It is important not to start with bc4, because then knight c4 would be um, his idea. Though d5, it still looks good for me, but still, it would not be an extra pawn. And as you know how greedy I am and how much I like the pawns, I actually love to grab pawns, but I also love to sacrifice them. I mean, I don't mind to sacrifice them. Sometimes even it's not needed, but I'm still going for it. This is very nice, d4. He's emphasizing that uh, it might not be so easy, lady because I have very nice bishop on, um, I have very nice two bishops, so you might have some problems. But let's see, I will still defend my pawn. <laughs> Pawns, actually. Uh, my goodness, what's going on? F5, does F5 work? Okay. Previously, I said that I was trusting myself in complicated positions and I was playing with intuition. So my intuition here said f5 and uh, I don't know if it is the best move in the position. Usually it happens so that when I like the move and I like it very much, I like it so much that I don't see why it's bad and usually it's bad. 
uh, but I hope not in this position. Okay, so f takes e5 is the problem. Is definitely the problem. So I have to go queen f6 probably. Yeah, just what I said. I liked f5 very much, but as you can see now, it's not good. Ay, 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 ay have to change this habit probably <laughs> okay i'll go for queen f6 i already dislike my position a tiny bit maybe not maybe i'm okay actually i'm okay or not mm. no idea because um Queen c6 looks like he's getting this pawn and he just played it. But I thought rook c8, then queen a6 is not nice. Mmm, then queen a6 is not nice. This is true. Okay, I will. Oh, no. I can't take this one because f5 is the problem. Then I'll take this one. If he takes bishop f4 then rook b6 rook b6 should be nice then rook b2 is there also sometimes now i like it because everything comes with tempo queen c7 oh i have to be careful have to be very very careful But I still like my position. <laughs> um, what if I just take, just take on b2? But then rook b2, queen b2, e f. Ah, maybe I can take rook f5. Yeah, that's true. I can take rook f5. <gasps> e5. Ooh, e5, e5, e5. Oh my god, I blundered. No, e5. Mm. He had to play e5. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. It's, everything seems so tempting. Bishop d5? Do I have bishop d5 move? I think I have bishop d5. Can I be so greedy? Because rook b2, queen b2. I think I was very lucky. At least looks like from the first side that now I'm doing very good. Rook g1 probably. But now I like my position because I'm. I will go like this. Bishop b5 is there though. I will go um, something like this. Here I will grab with the rook. No, 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 no. Queen d8. Ooh. Cream was... Uh, saved me. <laughs> this is... Uh, this is good or not? I thought oh I have to be I have to be very very quick um, okay here oh I have I had to take on a five I'm doing very 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 bad okay um, I have to be very quick probably I have to grab this one then I have to go like this uh, try to protect everything Ooh. Yeah, this is very, very, ooh, very bad end game for me, but I'll still try to. Uh, why am I doing this? Can anybody explain? Oh, I have to take. Oh my god, what I'm doing. Uh, mm, I lost some time. 
<laughs> okay, I probably deserved to lo lose this game, but it was such an interesting game. Um, thank you very much for the game. Um, thanks for stealing 20 points from my uh, rating. <laughs> That's not nice. Um, but look, here I liked my position. I even thought that I'm winning the pawn and greedy me was very happy. But after d4 I started to doubt a bit because I did not like e takes d4, bishop d4, uh, knight d7, mm, I don't know, I don't know, e5 is there, f4 is there, yeah, it's not good to be greedy sometimes. Knight d7, f4, f5, I'm still not sure if it's good or not, take take, queen d6, and queen c6 and here I made huge blunder with ef, e5 was just winning, not not here, bishop f4, rook b6 and here e5, no, f5 just winning, if I'm not mistaken it's just winning, yeah I have to take here, take here, probably bishop d5 is worth or mm, bishop d5, king h2 just then this one is hanging, it, it just, just lost for me. But ef, bishop d5, take, take, and I don't know, this is hanging, this is bad news that this is hanging. Um, knight f6 I did not like so much, but I also don't have that much choice, so after knight f6, bishop e5, queen f2, king h1, and here probably I could do much better, let's say what if I play knight e4? But this pawn is not hanging, so it doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, or I could play. Ah, I could. I could just take here. Okay, I just can take here. And now queen h3 is the problem. Bishop d5, knight d5, and queen c4 is not a problem because queen h3 is there. And yeah, this looks good. This looks already good because. If king h2, uh, I don't know, knight g4 doesn't work right now, but um, but okay, I, I have this pawn already and um, it's an extra extra healthy past, past pawn, so it is quite good for me. Well, thank you, thank you very much for the games and I hope that you enjoyed um, playing with me and watching the games, I definitely did. I had lots of fun playing these games. I didn't like my uh, last game because, um, okay, after E5 I was losing, but here I was kind of uh, playing okay. <laughs> um, definitely, it was very nice hour for me and I hope that it was uh, very good for you as well. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching and thanks for participating. As I told you before, I'm gonna have tactics show every Tuesday and every Thursday till the end of the March. In April I'm going uh, to Reykjavik. Um, I hope that you're gonna support me there. <laughs> I always feel supported and um, let's see how it goes. But uh, for now, I'm here on Chess24 every Tuesday, every uh, Thursday evening. I wish you a very, very, very nice evening and good luck. Bye-bye.